Hey YouTube, it's Faye, and for today's video, I'm gonna talk about the three most common leaks that you are most likely to find on the second generation Toyota Tacoma. And one of them is specific to the 1GR, the four liter engine, and uh, what you can do about them. Spoiler alert, I'm not gonna do anything about them. All right, let's get right into it. Tools that you're gonna need to do this job a clean paper towel, a lighting device, a photography device of some sort, and some brake parts cleaner. All right, let's start under the hood first. Now, if you're familiar with Toyota at all, then you probably already guessed that the first thing I'm gonna say is the water pump. You know, the rollout of the super long life pink coolant, people started seeing these water pumps leaking left and right. Now, some people say this is because of the extended service interval, so because it's well past 100,000 miles, just that amount of time causes that to happen. Uh, but some people blame the actual coolant itself. So I'm not gonna get into that conversation in this video. However, what I will say that uh, I'm not gonna do anything to this particular Tacoma because the water pump is not leaking. When this truck first came into my care as this preferred service technician, the first thing I did was actually switch out the coolant to long life. Now according to Toyota, you're really not supposed to do that. And also keep in mind that now the intervals are much lower. So every 30,000 miles, not every 100,000 miles for 60. <laughs> but this truck still has its original water pump. Now I'm not recommending that you do that. This is an Experiment only, uh, but we'll see. So far, so good. Anyway, what do you do if your water pump is leaking? Well, first thing you gotta do is inspect it. Ah, and this is when our first tool comes in. You're gonna wanna go ahead and grab your paper towel. Toyota actually issued a technical service bulletin letting folks know that just because it looks like it's leaking, it might actually not be leaking. So it might just be like a temporary leak that then seal itself back up. Okay, Toyota. Uh, but anyway, they say that you must take a towel touch the towel to the leak. And if there is any sort of dampness or wetness or residue, like not dry, crusty, but like actual wet, wet residue on the towel, then you should replace it. Now, I don't know, I'm kind of one of those people that actually like stresses out a little bit about things that are leaking, such as like a water pump where, I don't know, I feel like those are some of those things where they can leak for a while, but then unexpectedly without warning, they just, you know, all hell breaks loose and it just, you know, spills coolant everywhere and it's always in like the worst possible time. So. If I do see any sort of water pump leakage that, I don't know, I feel like is excessive, by excessive, I'm actually not a super huge fan of the paper towel method. I do understand that there is probably a little bit of overselling going on at the dealership because they're very easy to do, water pumps, and uh, I don't know, they're kind of fun, and they make good hours. So, uh, so you know, there might have been an oversell issue happening here, thus this TSB was issued for the towel method. Um, however, I will monitor them for the customer, I'll ward them if it's just a little bit of seepage, oh sure, but uh, if I'm seeing like quite a bit of crusties accumulating, I'll normally recommend like, hey, let's make sure that this is not an issue in the future. Let's make sure that this does not catastrophically fail and you would need this expected. So let's actually go ahead and replace the water pump. Uh, that being said, I uh, still have not done that to this Tacoma with 172,000 miles on it. So that is freaking excellent. For the second most common link that you will find on the second generation Toyota Tacoma V6 four liter engine is the timing cover leak. Ah, excellent. Passenger side of the engine right above the power steering pump where the cover, the block, and the head all come together, it always freaking seeps there. In fact, it seeps so commonly that there is actually, once again, a technical service bulletin issued to technicians. And there was a recall for the first 60,000 miles or 60 months of ownership of this vehicle. They had to replace it for free. Now, actually, this has already been done to this vehicle. And if you do not know if this happened under warranty for your vehicle, just go ahead and call up your local dealership with your VIN, and most likely they can look it up for you and let you know. Unless, of course, they're just mean or stubborn or they don't want to take the time with you. Uh, but that's what we did. This has already been done long before I ever met this truck. Uh, so I just called the dealer and they were like, yes, it's been done. You can actually tell that it's been done because quite often on the second round, or uh, when the dealership does it, they use of course the form in place gasket, which is different than the gray sealant that you will see that is most commonly, not all, but most commonly used to seal the timing covers off the line, off the assembly line. And the dealerships still use a black FIPG, form in place gasket. Now, if you look at the labor times on this, oh my god, this could take you like a weekend to do. So, um, I recommend monitoring this leak for a very long time. Now, in the case of this Tacoma, I've been monitoring this seep for the past four years, and uh, so far, it has not gotten much worse. Now, whenever there's like any sort of oil seepage, I normally follow like a couple of guidelines to recommending that a customer replace a seal or reseal a component. First of all, is it dripping? It's like, are you actively losing oil? Do you see it on the driveway? 
And I'm talking about a couple drips on the shop floor after letting the vehicle sit for quite some time. Not like a freaking quart, like be reasonable people here. Use your common sense. Obviously in this case, there's a skin plate underneath. So you want to make sure that like, is it not just dripping onto the skin plate and you're missing it? So it's, you know, you're not ever seeing it on the driveway, but is there an active leak to the point where you're actually losing fluid that will then cause a low engine oil level that will then cause way worse issues than just a leaking timing cover? Or is the oil seep or leak leaking onto another component that could then cause damage? Like for example, is it leaking onto a rubber hose that then is going to swell and bubble and eventually burst at some point? Is it leaking onto an into an alternator state, for example? Now, taking a look at this one, it's seeping a little bit. Is it leaking onto anything? Nah, not yet. What I actually recommend that we do in this particular instance, and we're gonna need three of our tools for this, is, once again, grab your towel, grab some brake clean, and a picture taking device. What I like to do is first take a picture of the seep or leak as it is at this very moment. So we're, just, we're monitoring, we're seeing how bad is it right now. Take a bunch of different pictures from a bunch of different angles. I like to keep a folder on my computer desktop of like all pictures of like my personal cars and every single like leak that I'm monitoring. And I recommend that y'all do the same thing. Take a bunch of pictures from different angles of this leak, then with your rag, and your brake clean, go ahead and clean off the area of any oil residue. Like clean it until it is fricking dry. Now be careful, don't go in there with like a little bristle brush or anything like, you don't wanna actually destroy or damage any of the sealant that's on there, but just clean it off really, really, really well. And another oil change, go back and take a look at it. Take more pictures of it. Has it gotten significantly worse? Has it changed at all? Maybe there was just like some random seepage there and now it's gone. Who knows? Uh, I've, I've actually seen that happen before, so it's not too far out of the realm of a possibility. So that's number two. Most common leak number three. Once again, if you're familiar with Toyotas, I bet you've already probably guessed this, and that is the power steering rack ends. You know, the outer seals like it goes into the boot, basically. Now I have seen this for my like entire Toyota career. Every single freaking steering rack leaks eventually. I don't know what it is. I haven't figured it out, but these steering racks are very freaking expensive to replace. No matter where I've worked, I've always just like replaced these and not actually resealed them. No, you can reseal them, you can buy a resale kit. Actually, I'm doing that on my Supra right now. Uh, but that takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of knowledge, and it also takes some special tools and some downtime. When you've got the rack out of your car, then you sort of tied up your car and you can't use it and go anywhere. So I don't know, I'm not, I'm not gonna recommend going out and buying a reseal kit and resealing your, your steering rack. Um, and I also don't recommend like that as soon as you see a little bit of dampness to run out and buy a new power steering rack. So let's once again, monitor it. Now I will recommend that if you see any tears in the outer boots, go ahead and replace those as soon as possible. It is worth a little bit of labor and pulling those outer tie rods off and replacing the boots because a huge killer of racks is getting dirt in there and then sliding that dirt back and forth across the seals and just like destroying them. So that is something you can do if you notice that your boots are torn, go ahead and replace the boots. But I can't tell you how many times I've seen steering racks oversold to customers in the past, not my customers, but you know, just unknowing vehicle owners that have a leaking power steering rack. All right, once again, what should you do about it? All right, on this lovely little Tacoma, I've been monitoring this steering rack seat for the last four years, and I haven't done crap about it because there's no reason to do anything about it right now. No matter what, it's gonna cost the same amount of money to replace the darn thing. So you might as well start saving up for it now, and then just making sure that you don't cause further damage in the system. Now, further damage in the system is caused by running the power steering fluid low. So that can cause damage, of course, to the power steering pump, it makes a terrible noise and cause pump cavitation, and uh, that is no good. And then if you cause damage to the pump, that cavitation, that metal on metal, well then you're gonna get a, like a bunch of metal shavings and contamination throughout the entire system, and they're gonna have to replace the entire system. And if anyone has ever replaced power steering pumps on Toyotas before, or like any other car for noise for that matter, I don't know. There are just like some vehicles you replace a power steering pump for noise, and the noise uh, just gets worse. <laughs> I don't know, that's another video for another time though. Curse you power steering pumps. Once again, when should this actually be addressed? When should you actually, actually replace your power steering rack? Okay, you should actually, actually replace it or reseal it when it leaks to the point where there's fluid actually on your driveway or you're noticing that the level of your power steering fluid is getting low. But think about it though, if it's not leaking to the point where you're having to top off the power steering reservoir every oil change, it's probably gonna be fine for quite some time. In the four years that I've been servicing this Tacoma, I have topped up the power steering reservoir once, and it was last month, which made me think about this and why I'm making this video. <laughs> I 
uh, and I topped it off by like, I don't know, half an inch in the reservoir maybe, but I've taken that vehicle in to get an alignment when I wasn't able to do it myself. And you know what happened? I was recommended a steering rack. Why would I pay $1,500 for a steering rack when it's literally not causing me any problems? It's not causing the owner any problems. Like why would I spend that money when chances are, I'm gonna put one in there and a few years down the road, I'm just gonna see that same sort of seepage out from the boots again. So anyway, uh, what am I gonna do about this? Well, I'm gonna continue to keep the long life coolant in the Tacoma and flush every 30,000 miles. I'm gonna continue to monitor the seep at the timing chain cover, and I'm gonna continue to monitor the seep at the power steering rack boots, and uh, probably continue to do nothing about any of those things. All right, and of course I gotta put in a quick disclaimer because it's gonna be like someone giving me hate in the comments, and that is that I am not at all trying to dissuade anyone from getting actual work done that they need. What I'm trying to just do is let you know these are common leaks that are gonna happen over time, and that if you were to jump on every single one of these things right away, that you might be spending a lot more money in repairs than you actually need to, you know what I mean? So like, you may reseal that timing cover like four times in the vehicle's life for absolutely no reason, or, you might just monitor it for a while and reseal it once when it actually becomes a problem. That just helps you save money over time, helps you save money on maintenance, and then also helps you to like not resent your car. I feel like when people get into the mindset that their car is just like a piece of garbage, then they just start slacking on all sort of maintenance. So the point of this video is just to make sure that you're not being oversold any items that don't need to be done, that you're not unnecessarily spending money, and that you, you know, still love your Toyota. All right, I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your positive comments. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in my next random video. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Hi guys, what you digging for? Is there good stuff in there? Is there a whole bunch of good stuff in there? <laughs> Where's your face? Hi. Oh, it's messy. Oh, it's really messy. Ooh, what you digging for? Mm. Any good stuff in there? Mm. <laughs>